Ah, oh, g'day YouTube. How are you? Tim here in Neat Sleep Van. So I've been living here in the van now for over a year, including six months over the New Zealand winter down in Wellington. And so it's been a really good test of the van, all its features. This is my list of 10 things I would have done differently if I was doing another van. Where the ribs of the van are, there are some big gaps. And then between the ribs, I wanted XPS foam as well because it's very non-compressible. Even use it under runways and roads. It's uh, got excellent compression strength. Unfortunately, they didn't have the right size and stock, so they sent me this other foam as a replacement. It should be strong enough. It was far too compressible. So where there were big gaps, it compressed. And we've had soft patches of the floor where the rest of the floor is too flexible and most normal people would install a layer of plywood but I did not do that uh, trying to save weight. Would I do the same system again? Either need to make sure that we actually have XPS foam between all the ribs or use the sheets of plywood. So the floor had a few soft spots so I fixed them simply by filling those spots with the compressible foam with blocks of wood so now it's really rock solid you can stand anywhere and feel great. Problem number two, this weird hole here. Now the reason for this hole is my original plan was to put a tall freestanding fridge here. Now the reason I didn't is because the van walls curve in a little more than I was expecting. It also meant you have to run the inverter 24 hours a day and that uses a lot of power more so than a 12 or 24 volt fridge. So in the end, I swapped it out for a under bench fridge, which was a lot more expensive, but it frees up all this space and I ended up with this extra chunk of bench space, which work, has worked out really well. So what it means is I've ended up with this big hole here, which would be perfect for a microwave or something like that above the kitchen bench. The other little problem I've got with my cabinets is I pulled these out a bit too far for whatever reason. I originally designed to have them back further and then didn't. So I do find that these cabinets get in the way a little bit when I'm trying to wash the dishes or whatever. In hindsight, I would have made sure that the cabinets over the bench would match the length of the bench, go all the way along, have room for a microwave, and would be pushed back so you don't bang your head on them. Problem number three, the weight of the van. It's really at the max all up weight for the vehicle once you include myself, the water, the fuel tank, everything else and the problem with that is I can't put in some features I wanted such as a uh, microwave and you just can't load it up with lots of luggage. In hindsight I bought the wrong van this is a three and a half thousand kilo model and I should have bought a model that can handle a lot more weight. Unfortunately it's hard to buy a Ford Transit in New Zealand there's only two models three and a half thousand kilos or the six thousand kilo which means you have to have the next license level up for heavy truck driving. Mercedes Sprinter offer a version of the van that's sort of in the middle so you don't need the truck license but, but it can take more weight. Problem number four, latches. Now what I ended up buying is these Armstrong push button latches and they work by pushing in when it's pushed in it's locked that's open and unlocked and if there's a heavy weight it could push the door open the drawers are very heavy they're full of stuff every time I went around a corner if they weren't locked you'd have the drawer fling open and so what I've done is swap out all of these latches on the drawers for what we call slam latches now these work a lot better as soon as the drawer is shut the drawer is locked. You open it by pulling the latch. Installation of these was terrible so you have to be incredibly precise because there's this little angled piece here and if it doesn't hit the latch in exactly the right place it just won't shut and close. The slam latches are a lot more forgiving. You know, they've got a lot bigger gap. You can move the drawer up and down than a certain tolerance and it will still work happily. So much better design and they work much better. I also had a number of these Armstrong latches break. So you can see that little plastic bit has snapped off on some of the latches. It's 
speaking of cabinets, one thing I'd like to change if I would do this again is just the layout of these cabinets. You can see the lines don't line up, things aren't very even, and the reason for that is because of the uh, positioning of the gas locker there. And the oven had to fit in, so... And we've got our uh, distribution board in behind the uh, rubbish bin here. So, just the layout of these drawers I'd like to improve. So I've been sleeping on the bed now for uh, over a year, and it's actually worked really well. But I have had a couple of little problems with my uh, bed slat design. The slats themselves work really well. The problem is how they're attached to the frames. You can see here there's very little plywood actually underneath the slat. Now the problem is, if this isn't completely supported by the uh, frame that it's sitting on, then when you put weight on it, it'll just break. So obviously these frames are far too thin. I also use pocket holes to attach them at the ends there. The problem is, thanks to the holes, you're cutting away a huge amount of material, so there's very little actual wood left. So again, if you put weight on this without it being supported underneath, it'll just snap and break. So I'm currently working on a solution, and that solution is a beautiful, strong, rigid aluminium frame. New slats have been ordered because they need to be slightly longer, so you can see I'm just going to uh, put them all on top. Also help the feel of the bed frame. You won't be able to feel the frame at all because all the slats themselves will be flush with each other. Number seven. So back door is really useful. The problem with the back door is you can see there's a couch in the way. It would be really useful. There's a latch down here you can use to open the back door. But to actually get out, you've got to squeeze through that tiny little gap there. Now I actually built and designed this um, foldable piece at the end here to give you access. But I feel that could be done better. Just a little bit more space at the back would be really useful there. So this next problem is really about the design of the Ford Transit and what we can buy here in New Zealand. Pretty much all of them come with three bench seat configuration. Now what this means is it's almost impossible to get through well, you can squeeze through that little gap if you want to. But it makes it difficult to get in and out. You basically have to get out of the van, come around and get into the driver's seat. And of course the opening door here is this side. So you have to walk all the way around the front to get to the driver's door to jump in. Now it is occasionally handy to have three actual seat belts because I don't have any seating in the rear. So that is a useful feature. But being able to walk back and forwards, you do every day. Whereas having three people in the van, I would do very occasionally. So I would prefer to have two seats here in the front. So this next problem is around the electrical system. And I have to say it's worked really well. Very happy with it. There's 900 watts of solar on the roof, which is way more than most fans. What I haven't done yet is alternator charging. Now the reason I haven't done it yet is because the van is 12 volt, my house battery is 24 volt. So you need some sort of converter to convert 12 to 24 volt at the sort of current levels that the alternator would be capable of charging the battery at. There's a few ways you can do it. Uh, if you don't have lithium batteries, it's probably easier to find a DC DC converter that can uh, boost uh, the voltage. Victron do make one, a uh, buck boost converter, uh, which is designed for almost exactly this situation. And that would be the best bet. The problem is it's about $1,200, which I haven't quite found the money and time to spend and do that but it would be well worth it because even with 900 watts on the roof over winter there is just not enough power generated due to cloudy conditions and very short days so being able to just turn on the engine and charge up that way would be really useful one option would be to include a little generator you can buy them about twelve hundred dollars fifteen hundred dollars and that would provide all your energy need when you're out in the WAPs, desperate. Sure, they're noisy, but if you're only using it occasionally, it's not a big drama. It also means you have to carry a fuel tank around, which is not ideal, because they're all petrol, whereas the van is diesel, so you'd have to carry a separate little fuel tank around. All right, here's item number 10, storage under the bed. I have to say, it has not been as useful as I thought it would be. The original plan was to have all of the um, bed here hinged, so you can just lift it up. 
The reality is these mattresses weigh a ton and they're big and awkward. So let me just demonstrate what it's like. If I want to access the compartment at the back, that's not too bad. I've got a compartment at the back here. I can slide the cushions forward and then access this. And the design of that was somewhere to put your duvets and your cushions and your anything you're not using when it's, say, in couch mode. I have found it's not quite as convenient as I thought it would be. So I don't actually use it that often. Normally I just shove the duvets and blankets into the corner of the van and then they're more accessible when I want to make the bed at the end of the night. The next step is how do I get access to the hinged piece underneath? Now I foolishly made it the full length of the bed so you have to lift the whole mattress to get under there. And Actually, actually, that's not, not as bad as I thought it would be. What it really needs is some hydraulic lifts of some sort so that it can keep this up, because otherwise it's just too heavy. Again, my slatted frame here is just too thin, so you can lift up one end and the whole thing flexes, and if you weren't careful, you'd be able to break the whole thing and snap it in half. So there we go, that's my uh, 10 things I would have done differently in the van. Really? If those are all the problems I've got, I'm not doing too badly. Most of them are fixable, some of them are just fundamental of the van. Keep an eye out for the next video where we talk about all the things that have worked really well in the van, and there are heaps. So, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time.